بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى صلوات الله والسلام على نبينا المصطفى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعض last Sunday a brother drove all the way to another city to meet me when I met him I could see he was in quite a state he was suffering from an issue that we want to raise the awareness of our community as it relates to this issue because in this masjid a lot of people are dealing with it or a lot of our relatives are dealing with it it is a serious problem dealing with mental illnesses he was and he is suffering from wiswas wiswas everybody here suffers from wiswas there's not a single person except that he or she has wiswas and wiswas which is the whispers that come from a shaitan it has an assorted number of cousins and relatives under the same umbrella so the person has speculation the person suffers from suspicion the person has doubt, has all kind of issues. So he came all the way to that city. And when I saw him, I said, yeah, this brother has an issue. And this is an ongoing thing. You deal with it all the time with people from our community. Not only that, but personally, I had two family members in Islam who suffer from wiswas. My wife worked herself out of that. And in 18 years of marriage, that lady did not miss making the afkar before going to bed in 18 years of marriage from what I saw. And now she doesn't have wiswas at all. But everybody has wiswas. But the one who has some level of, you know, normality, he can bring his wiswas in control. He remembers what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالظَّنْ فَإِنَّ الظَّنْ أَكْذِبُ الْحَدِيثِ Beware of speculating. Beware of being suspicious, because usually that's wrong. So when one of the people who is normal, when he starts or she starts to speculate and have suspicion, they push it away. And they say, that's from a shaitan. And the prophet said, don't do it. And it's going to twist you up and mess you up. That's for people who don't suffer from wiswas. As for the one who suffers from wiswas, it's a mushkira. The brother is listening to me. One of us says to his wife, you know I regret the day marrying you. I'm sick of you and I'm sick of this marriage. And that's what he says. That's what you said to your wife. That's what I said to my wife. That's what your wife said to you. That's how it is. Almost everybody in here who's married, you're going to say something that you didn't mean to your wife. That's hurtful. She's going to say something back to you. One of the two are going to say more, the other one's going to say less. But that's something that's normal. Except for the one that Allah gave him or her isma and al hidd al ilahi. I'm sick and tired of you and I'm sick and tired of this marriage. But for the one who has wiswas, this means that he's divorced. And he lives his life, I'm divorced because I said that to my wife. And no matter what you say, you say, you say to him or her, it's going to be hard for them to accept it. So this particular brother, may Allah help us and him, after going to 10 people, 10, dua, shayukh, 10, I was number 11. He drove me home, I listened to the story. After hearing the story, I said, it's very simple, brother. Are you done? Yes. I said, you're not divorced. The hadith of the prophet is clear, and he knew the hadith. I'm not even going to translate it, because everybody knows it. That was not your niyyat. And Allah mentioned in the Quran, When لَيْسَ لِلْإِنسَانِ إِلَّا مَا سَعَى When the sa'yakum sofa yura, the human being will not get anything except what he desired and he intended and he worked towards it. And your efforts are going to be seen by Allah as sa'i, like a sa'i between Safa and Marwa. So the meaning of sa'i, as the ayah said, it's what you intend and what you work towards. Now, if you just sit there and twiddle your thumbs and say, I'm going to Jannah, I'm going to Jannah, 
and you don't do any work, and you don't do any intentions, and this is what this ayat is talking against. But the ayat is applicable here. You didn't intend that. You didn't mean that. When a person makes a sa'i between Saf and Marwa, after finished sa'i, he's not going to say, I just made tawaf around the Kaaba. A sa'i is with your niya. I was the 11th person who told him that. Some time went by, he relaxed, we stopped talking. I woke up, he brought it back up again. Am I married to my wife? No, yeah, you're not married. And then I saw what the issue was. So I wanted to bring this to your attention because, like me, you're the community member that has to deal with the husband like that, the wife like that. Like me, I had to deal with that brother. We got to deal with people like that. So I want to address this issue for people like him and the community, inshallah. Second thing happened. On Wednesday, I get a call from someone in America. They reached out to me. They told me about an incident that blew my mind. The lady who I know took her daughter, took the son to the grandparents. Happy to see the kid. Dropped them off. Never came back to get the kid. When they went, what's going on? After so many days, the lady was there in the house, blew her brains out. Why did she kill herself? Wiswas. Wiswas. Not schizophrenia. Wiswas. She couldn't live with the wiswas in her head. And that's another thing. This issue of wiswas. When the person is in the room, the wiswas is not under the bed. The wiswas is not in the cabinet, in the doolab. That wiswas is in the head. It's in the heart. And it's not okay for you to come and say, get over it. Come on, it's just shaitan. Can't say that to these people. Because they are not processing things and thinking and analyzing. Normally, they have an issue. Worse than that, or just as bad, is the isolation. They come to our community, and it's an aib, ah, to have any mental disorder. Although, the vast majority of people in this masjid have some kind of mental issue. From severe to mild, everybody in here, from severe to mild, except for the one that Allah gave him, his hiv al-ilahi. So one of our community members, they go to the doctor and they are afraid to say what happened because they feel, hey, I can't talk. They're going to think I'm crazy if I start saying to the doctor, you know, khinzip keeps coming to me. Khinzip, what's that? That's the one who comes to you, makes with swas when you're praying. Now the doctor is going to diagnose him or her as someone who's hallucinating, schizophrenic. So the person just suffers in silence. Big muskila in our community. It's a big issue. And it creates all kinds of issues. For the people who have wiswas, whether it's severe, moderate, or just what most people have, shaitan comes to you and he makes wiswas. There are a number of things that you have to try to do. Now my wife, my other family member, who is not doing these things, if you're not doing these things, then you're blameworthy. I'm going to tell you right here, on behalf of your wife, you're making life difficult. How in the world do you expect your wife to live with you amicably? How do you think she can live with you with Sakin and Mawadda when one word will trigger you? One word will trigger you. So because the person says, get out of here, to his wife, get out of here, he thinks she's divorced. So the word out, if the wife says, I'm getting out of here, oh, and you expect that lady to be able to live with you, she won't be able to live with you. There's going to come a point where she can't take it anymore. So the people who suffer from this, you can't be a poor bunny rabbit and just sit back and say, everybody has to love me unconditionally. No, I'm here on this member saying all of our community have to support these people. Don't laugh at them, don't ridicule them, don't make them isolated. We have to say in our community, our masjid is here to help you. We're here to help you. You're the topic of today's discussion, but you have a level of responsibility because I cannot be patient all the time. There are gonna be times where I wake up on the wrong side of the bed. There are gonna be times when it's hot out here. There's gonna be times when we're dealing with stuff. 
And if you don't try to do some of these things, then you are blameworthy. And from those things that we can do and that you should do, and at the top of the list is what the Prophet mentioned, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tremendous hadith. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inna allaha tajawaza an ummati ma haddathat bihi anfusaha ma lam ta'mal aw tatakallam. Allah will forgive all of my ummah, all of my community, when they think about things internally, when they think about whatever it is, it's dirty, it's nasty, it's crazy. The normal person may see it in a dream. He's doing something with someone that is out of this world. He wakes up saying, A'udhu billahi, just thinking about it makes him want to vomit. Prophet Muhammad says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah will forgive you for that kalam that goes off in your head, your dreams, you're sitting there and you start thinking crazy stuff and you're awake. He said, as long as you don't talk about it and as long as you don't act upon it. So if someone comes and you say, hey, I saw in a dream I was smoking weed with my moms. All right, now you're in trouble. Now the angel writes that down. But as long as you're quiet and you don't act upon it, you're not responsible. Just like the one who's fasting and he drinks and eats while he's fasting. That's how his nafs is. Like the one who goes to sleep and he doesn't wake up on time for fajr unintentionally. La yukallifu Allahu nafsan illa wus'aha. So I say to the person with wiswas, la tatakallam. Don't talk about it to the best of your ability. Make jihad the nafs and keep that stuff inside to the best of your ability. Secondly, a dhikr, the dhikr of Allah. Allah mentioned in the Quran, inna ladhina taqaw. إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفٌ مِّنِ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبْسِرُونَ Those people who are touched by the devil, they get messed by the devil, wiswas, ain, whatever. They get touched by the devil. If they remember Allah, lo and behold, they can see it right. So the Prophet taught us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, things to do. From this wiswas, ikhwani, we have this huzn. Huzn is sadness. Ahzan, sadness. It comes as a result of the bad experiences in the past. You saw something bad. Something bad happened to you. You heard something bad. And as a result, you're now and today, you're suffering because of what happened in the past. But then there's the things that are going to happen in the future, inshallah. And they create anxiety. Those things create aliktiab, depression. Because she's worried. Listen to her. She's worried. What is she worried about? If I die, will my kids become, will they stay on Islam? And she worries herself to death. Her stomach is big and bloated. She can't sleep. She has pain. And she is worrying about something. You should worry about that. Will your children remain Muslims? May Allah give our kids to bath after our death. She should worry about that. But not to the degree where you can't sleep. You can't eat. But that's what she has. With swas. Puts her stomach like a pretzel. And you, the one who loves her, you come and say, don't worry about that. Allah is the wakil. Allah Azzawajal is enough as a hasib. Don't worry. It's not like she's against that. You tell that brother, as if he wants to hear he's divorced. I'm the 11th one. Yo, brother, what, you want to be divorced? Allah said in the Quran, وَلَا تَسْأَلُوا عَنْ أَشَاءٍ تُبْدَ لَكُمْ تَسُؤْكُمْ don't ask about those things. If they were to be made apparent to you, they're going to cause you harm. Do you want to be divorced? No, he doesn't want to be the divorce. He doesn't want that. He just can't help it. It's difficult for him. So if he or she, they're making wudu at the basin, and you see them, and you're there to make muraqaba, you tell them after they finish, hey, you did everything, and you did everything correctly, and three times, they're going to say to you, no, I didn't, warabbi al-Kaaba. They have a condition. So as the husband, the father, the brother, the sister, the imam, as the neighbor, the distant relative, I don't laugh at them people. I have to support them. Never argue with them about the issue because they're talking to you from a place that's dark for them. Now you get upset and frustrated and you're arguing with them and that causes the problem to escalate. It's not the way. We say to that person, you have to make the dhikr of Allah. And from the dhikr of Allah, 
every night before going to sleep, the Prophet made Ruqya, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He read Ayatul Kursi. He read Qul Huwallahu Ahad. And the last two surahs of the Quran. And in the last surah of the Quran, you're seeking an istiadah, help from Allah against the shaitan. Min sharri, al-wiswas, al-khannas, al-ladhi yuwaswisu fi sudurin nas. That's seeking refuge in Allah from shaitan. Listen, Ummat al-Islam. Our Nabi and our Rasul alayhi salam came with a religion. And he taught us certain du'a that are divine protection. And one of those du'a is the du'a for this stuff. Now I'm not going to go through that whole du'a. But I'm going to ask this person in our audience. You hear this khutbah. And you say, alhamdulillah, finally. You hear this khutbah. I want to ask you. Did you memorize the du'a of wiswas? You didn't memorize the du'a. Did any Muslim here memorize the du'a of wiswas? Because in this du'a, everybody here is affected. And what this du'a is saying. من أصابه هم أو غا هم من أصابه هم أو غم فليدعو بهذه الكلمات. Anyone who is afflicted with anxiety or he's afflicted with gloom and doom and he's down. Anyone who has this worry, anyone, if he makes this du'a, it'll go away. Easy du'a. اللهم إني عبدك وابن عبدك وابن أمتك to the end. نَاصِيَتِ بِيَدِكَ مَاضٍ فِيَ حُكْمُكَ عَدْلٌ فِيَ قَضَاءُكَ Tremendous hadith. And it'll make you and it'll teach you, don't feel sorry for yourself, for your wiswas, because Allah is adil. He's just in what he decreed on you. And your forehead is in Allah's hands. Everywhere and every place Allah wants you to go and what to happen to you or not, that's with Allah, not you or me. And it's been written that Wiswas hits you. So don't say, woe is me, I'm the poor bunny rabbit. Say the dua and learn this dua. Part of that dua, Allahumma inni as'aluka bi kulli ismin huwa laka. Sammayta bihi nafsaka. Aw allamtuhu ahadam min khalqik. Aw anzaltuhu fi kitabik. Aw istatfirta bihi fi ilm al-ghaib indik. An taj'ala al-Qur'an rabi' qalbi wa nura sadri. I'm going to ask the person who suffers from this wise. I'm a revert. I memorized three or four ayat surahs of the Quran. Am I exempt from trying to help myself? Is that an excuse? I'm a revert. My wife is a revert. She doesn't know Arabic. But she had wiswas. So in that dua against wiswas and against this issue, Oh Allah, I beg you and I ask you, make the Quran the spring of my heart. And make the Quran, make it the nur of my chest. So that goes to show the Muslims should be reading the Quran. You got with why spend time with the kalam of Allah? How much time have you spent with the book of Allah? And that's a question to all of you. That's a question to me. That's a question to you, Aki. Yo, 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 yo. How much time did we spend with the Quran? So now that we have these mental disorders, and listen, from the Ashratu Sa'a, Rasulullah told us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tunza'u uqulu akthari thalik al-zaman. The majority of the people close to Yom al-Qiyamah, the majority, their minds will be gone. Their minds will be gone. That's the condition. So maybe you don't have wiswas, you got something else. But that dua, it shows us, or that hadith goes to show us the importance, the importance and the role that the Quran has and it plays. Ruqya and other than that. Aqulu qawri hadha wa staghfirullah li wa lakum. Wa nasallallaha ta'ala al-thabat wa al-sada. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Last thing I want to mention to everybody here is a shaitan is a big fit and a big problem. But... He said in the Quran, and Allah mentioned in many ayah, inna ibadi laysa laka alayhim sultan. Hey, shaitan, iblis, Allah said, my sincere servants, you don't have and you won't have any power over them. Shaitan said to the human beings, Allah promised you, and I promised you, but I broke my promise, and I can't do anything except call you and make whispers. Shaitan can't grab anybody here by the neck and say, 
I'm going to stop you from praying. He can't grab anybody here and make him roll up a spliff and smoke it. He can't do that. As a matter of fact, if you close a door, he can't open it. If you put something, a towel, a piece of paper, the pot over the top of the pot, if you put the lid on, he can't open it. That's how weak he is. If you say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, he's going to get in the wind. You read Surah Al Baqarah, he's going to get in the wind. That's Shaitan. So we have all of those ayat of the Quran. His strength and power and ability goes over those people who take him as a friend. How do you take him as a friend? You don't pray. You're Aqidah, first of all. You're Aqidah jammed up. You want that hocus pocus cultural Islam. Rasulullah didn't die, Hazar Nazar, that kind of stuff. You a straight up, real Ghali, Hizbi, above a straight. No. Just be on your religion. Easy religion of Al Islam. Easy religion of Islam. So as it relates to this issue, I want to say to the community members very quickly, the brothers told me 20 minutes, get out of here. We got to be done. But because of the nature of this issue, Ummah al Islam, your relatives who are suffering from this, you got to go on the internet and you have to learn clinically and technically how to deal with the people. A lot of times we're not educated and we don't have the wherewithal and the professional, you know, ability to deal with these things. We're emotional. This requires someone who knows the deen and he knows the importance of being patient, being easy. And it requires someone who has read up on this stuff to deal with our brothers and sisters who have wiswas. In concluding, we want every Muslim in this masjid and in other than this masjid to know. At GLM, we're not perfect, but we're people who are trying to be on the sunnah according to understanding of what those companions were upon me, Allah be pleased with them. And we're trying to address and take care of the affairs and the needs of the ummah internationally, nationally, and locally to the best of our ability. So that means if you fall anywhere in the scale of these mental disorders, with swas, this, that, our imams are here for advice and our community is here to raise awareness like today. We're here to support our community members. And from this member on this day, in concluding this khutbah al Juma, I ask Allah Azza wa by His ism and Adam to give shifa to all of our brothers and sisters and youngsters who are suffering from this wiswas, to give everybody sabr to deal with it from both sides, and that Allah Taala, if He chooses in His infinite wisdom to leave the wiswas on people, oh Allah, we ask You to give us the sabr and the, with, the wherewithal to be steadfast and patient with it. We ask him that, and only he can deliver that for us and make it happen for us. And we ask that from him, inshallah ta'ala. Akam as-salat, yarhamakumullah.